in my mind. Joy sent a happy day. Joy in my feet. Joy in my hands. Joy in every way. God took those worldly desires. Gave me heavenly fire. Now I got a brand new goal. Since I met this man called Jesus Christ, I got the joy, joy, joy in my soul. Well, thank you for joining me today on A Woman's Joy. My name is Donette Hug Douglas, and I will be your host for the next half hour. And we're continuing our discussion with our dear sister and friend in Christ, Sherry McDaniel. Donette. And she is the leader for the Sisters uh, Women's Fellowship Group there in uh, First Baptist Church in Canton. Mm -hmm. And uh, she has a Facebook page, and I encourage you to get on that Facebook page. And uh, she has a, a devotion, a message, a word from God. And yeah, they, 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 they hurt sometimes. <laughs> You're going out with her. But uh, anyway, it's good to be in the Word and study it always because we want to grow and grow and Amen. grow. Amen. Amen. Well, we've been talking about obedience, and that's an ouch, ouch. <laughs> but it's good because God wants us to be obedient. And that's a choice he gives us. We can be obedient or we can be disobedient. And the reason that we've come up with that discussion the last two weeks, because we've been talking about the biblical meaning of love for a long time. And one of the scriptures, you want to share it with us, Sherry, well, that comes up quite regular is from John. John yes. 14, 15. If you love me, yeah. God says, keep my commandments. Yeah, and we're going to discuss that some more today. <laughs> but first, let's have our joy scripture. And uh, it comes from Psalms 105, 43 through 45. And he brought forth his people with joy and his chosen with gladness and gave them the lands of the heathen. And they inherited the labor of the people that they might observe his statues and keep his laws. Praise ye the Lord. Hmm. His people came forth with joy. In fact, it says shouting. <laughs> you get joy in the Lord, you get to shouting. Well, they came forth with joy. And that they would um, observe his statues and keep his laws. And Praise there's the that Lord. obedience word. There's that obedience right there. Keep. Mm -hmm. Keep. Keep. Mm -hmm. Now, I know we gave the definition for that last week, but you want to also add the word if, because that's a little word. I know it's just two letters, but we've talked a lot about it lately, too. But give us the definition for if, and then the definition for keep. From John 14, 15, uh -huh. if you love me, keep my commandments. And the definition is this. It is a functional word, meaning on the condition of thing, one thing, lies another. Mm -hmm. We get that about math equations, but right. do we get that that all things work in God's system pretty perfectly, yes. Diane? And it fits so perfectly with, with what we're talking about. Now, the word keep means mm -hmm. to retain in one's possession, to be faithful to, to conform in habit or conduct, to stay in accordance with, to watch over it, to defend, to tend to, support, and to cause to preserve and maintain. And we're talking about um, keeping God's commandments. And these are things that God has told us, words and instructions mm -hmm. that God has given us to live by. Yes. And, and he's saying, now I want you to keep these in your possession. I want you to be faithful to them. I want you to conform your conduct, mm -hmm. your behavior, your words to them. I want you to stay in accordance with, that means parallel mm -hmm. with and stay in plumb line with, to watch over, to defend them. We said this on the last program that we don't see people much defending. No the commandments of God. We live in a, in a world nowadays that just says, do your own thing, whatever feels mm -hmm. good to you. But that's not always good for you, according to the word of God. No. We, need, we need to live by his word to support and then to cause to preserve and maintain. Mm -hmm. Everything that I just said at the center of that is choice. We're going to have to choose mm -hmm 
whether or not we're going to be obedient mm -hmm. to God. And the first question is whether or not we will come to Christ and surrender our lives yes. to Him. Yes. That's the first and the, the most important question that a person uh, mm -hmm. will, will uh, be confronted with in life. And, mm -hmm. and you will answer it, whether yes. you do by <laughs> mouth or whether you live by action, you will mm -hmm. answer. Um, and then after that, w if we make the choice and when we make the choice to surrender our lives to God, mm -hmm. That's obedience yes. too, to surrender to the will of another. Then we follow that by living a life that demonstrates that mm -hmm. first to God and then to the world, which for the purpose of, or has a purpose of, Jesus said, if I be lifted up, yes. we'll draw um, all men unto him. So us living obediently to God brings about God's the manifestation of God's blessing in our yes. life, but us living obediently to God also uh, brings has the potential to bring about a, a soul. Yes, another soul coming into relationship with Christ. Yes, Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Well, you know. Um, Deuteronomy 11, 27, 28 says, A blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day. And a curse if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after mm -hmm. other gods which you have not known. Choice. Choice. Choose me or choose other. You know, when I was talking about whether or not you make the choice to, mm -hmm. uh, that choice is still made because the Bible tells us mm -hmm. in part of our instructions, God says, if you're not for me, you're against me. That's right. So even though we say, well, no, I didn't, I didn't say that. I, I didn't make that. I didn't say that about God. Mm -mm. Your action yes. demonstrated that you're not willing to. To come to God. Yes. So in, in essence, you've already made your choice. Yes. And until you make another choice, mm -hmm. which is to come to God, then we are separated from God. Mm -hmm. And if we don't make that choice by the end of this physical life, mm -hmm. then we will live all of eternity separated from God. That's right. That is no place done no. that anyone wants to be, no. nor does God want it for anyone. No. No. He said he is long suffering, not willing that even one. one. Not one. Not he doesn't one. want even one to perish. But he loves us so much, he still gives us the choice mm -hmm. whether or not to come to him. So all of that kind of lays a groundwork mm -hmm. for, you know, we've talked about defining love uh, biblically, biblically. And to love God, that means. To love God with all of our heart. Think about everything that's in your heart. Mm -hmm. All the things that you carry in your heart. Uh, to love God with all your soul, which is mm -hmm. your mind, your will, and emotion. Right. That, there's choice right, right there. there. And with all of your might. Choice, again. So to love God means that we are going to have to choose to be obedient and you know we I, I, I don't know if your folks can can see all of this but yeah, we just got work. all of our papers <laughs> laid out here once again uh, for a uh, study on obedience that God has asked us literally asked us to to share yes yes you know uh, God God's love is amazing and we've been learning that through the yes. months. Sherry mm -hmm. and I sit here and talk. And we brought this up, I think, in the last program. God made a way, okay, mm -hmm. that we could be reconciled back to him, that we don't have to stay separated from him. What great love. Do you realize how much God loves you today? I think that's part of that totally submitting mm -hmm. And being able to obey is to know that great love. Do you know how much God loves you today? And you say, but why would God allow all these things happen to me? I've had this happen and this happen and this happen. Well, first of all, God came. Jesus said, I come that you'd have life and you'd have it abundant. Yes. 
But right preceding that, it says the enemy came to steal, the thief came to steal, kill, and destroy. Mm -hmm. We have to remember we live in a fallen world. Mm -hmm. There's much darkness, there's much evil, there's much sin. Mm -hmm. So when you are not serving God, you are in this world, and yes, God does protect us because God, yes. He gives us chance after chance. Oh my goodness, the things mm -hmm. He's protected me from. But He wants our heart. Mm -hmm. He wants our life. He wants our fellowship. Mm -hmm. yes. He wants a commitment yes. from us. And so when we do that, wow, the blessings come. Blessings of God. The blessings mm -hmm. come. Mm -hmm. But when we don't do that, and the Bible talks about it, Deuteronomy yes. 28, you read it for yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When we do not, it says curses. Amen. Curses come. And we live in all these horrible things that the world brings at us every day. Sickness, financial problems, relationship problems. You know? The enemy lying to us all the time, discouraging us, beating us up, telling us nobody loves us. We live in that. Okay, and the enemy's still going to try and talk to you when you've made that choice mm -hmm. to serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. But you know different <laughs> because you've read the Word of God. You know God loves you or you wouldn't have gave your heart to Him. You wouldn't have asked Him to come in. But you have to realize how much, how much He loves you. The Bible says 451 times in the mm -hmm. New King James Version, God uses the word keep. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking it's pretty important to God. Mm -hmm. Very important. That when He tells us to keep something, that there's a great significance in that. Mm -hmm. And when He gives us His Word to keep, mm -hmm. it is what unlocks the promises of God. If mm -hmm. I can read from Deuteronomy, mm -hmm. do you mind? Yes, yes, go ahead. Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 2. Now it shall come to pass. There is no if there. <laughs> it shall. <laughs> yep. It yeah. shall come to pass. Yeah. Here's the if part. If you diligently obey yeah. the voice of the Lord to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God, again, there is no if in this part, yeah. no will if. set you high above all the nations of the earth and all these blessings, blessings. done it shall come upon you and overtake you because, yes. the Bible very clearly mm -hmm. says, because yes. you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Now, what are the blessings? These are the promises of God. Mm -hmm. And depends on which theologian you can, yeah. you, you um, and which study that you uh, side with, there can be upwards of 6,000 promises in, the, in mm -hmm. the Word of God that He's made for His children. Um, but you know, th this is what I know about blessing. It means empowered to prosper, succeed, and flourish. Amen. Who among us don't want that Amen. in our lives? That's what Amen. God promises. Amen. You know, I, I have people that I love very much. Mm -hmm. Intentionally, a lot of people who care about you won't intentionally hurt you. No. But that doesn't mean they don't disappoint me sometimes. Right. right. And me, the same with them. Right. God never will. Never, Donna. Never. His promises are more sure mm -hmm. and have the highest authority behind mm -hmm. them than anything in creation. That's right. And He promises if we will diligently obey, that these blessings, and I love this analogy, it says that they will come upon you and overtake you. Yes, Imagine walking down a yes. sidewalk and here come the blessings of God <clears throat> and you turn around and you see these blessings, but you're not sure what they are. So maybe you speed up a little bit, you take a left, mm -hmm. you take a right. And these blessings literally chase us down and come upon us because we have been obedient. Yes diligently, and that means with effort, have sought 
to be obedient to the things of God. Are we always going to get it right? No, but God knows that. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, he says he is a rewarder mm -hmm. of those who diligently seek him. Mm -hmm. Those are his blessings. Mm -hmm. But Amen. he's looking for an obedient people yes. to bless. I mean, that was his intention for the Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. They had no lack, no need. Everything they could ever want, ever, yes. was in that garden. But I want to talk about the other side of that. It still wasn't enough. Hmm. They believed a lie from the devil. Yep. And wasn't therein enough. came disobedience and sin. So as much as God loves us and has provided for us, he still gives us the power to choose, the power to choose. And we need to understand that choice is pretty strong because Adam and Eve had everything, but they listened to the lie. When the devil said, surely God didn't mean that you would die. If you eat of this fruit, you'll be like mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. And they fell into that lie. And because of that, the fall of man happened. That's right. But, you know, before we come down too hard on Adam and Eve, right. we need to understand that when God sees our disobedience, mm -hmm. he, sin is sin. That's right. It's the same. Our betrayal of God's word mm -hmm. is what causes us to be separated from God, just like God separated himself physically mm -hmm. from Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible talks about that, that he came in the cool of the day. Yes. And walked with Adam and Eve. But on that final day, when he found out that they had fallen, he physically had to separate himself mm -hmm. from Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean he didn't love them anymore. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that the first thing that he did was to slay an animal, mm -hmm. shed its blood, right. and provide a, an atonement and a covering for yes. them. But he still had to separate himself. That's the consequence of sin that we're talking mm -hmm. about, being separated from the things of God. But Jesus came mm -hmm. to cover us with that atonement for our sin mm -hmm. once again. And the Bible talks about to restore us. But we need to understand um, choice is, is going to pull at you. Mm -hmm. Sure but, is. But we choose. And we do have the power because if we didn't have the power to choose, mm -hmm. why would God say, mm -hmm. you choose? Yeah, you choose. You he choose. gives us that power. He loves us that To me, that just is so amazing. I know it. But he does. Yep. He That's does. That's what's so marvelous about his love. Amen. He gives us that free will. Amen. And as hard as it is, <laughs> um, sometimes to watch people that make that wrong choice, but still, he gave us free will. Yeah. You know, um, as you were talking, I, I kept thinking about the scripture we had talked about with uh, Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. Pharaoh was in Egypt. They worshipped other gods. Mm -hmm. They didn't worship the true God, mm -hmm. as Moses and, and the Israelites did. Mm -hmm. And in Exodus 5, 2, and Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey Ooh. his voice? Have we said that to God? Yes, we have. We'd like to think we haven't. <gasps> Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice? Now, when you said that, I thought, wow, that is a very dangerous statement because that's a lot of arrogance. But we say that. Yeah. We've been guilty. Yes, we have. And he didn't obey his voice to let Israel go. You know, Moses had come to him. And I know not the Lord, he says neither will I let Israel go. And he did not know the Lord. And he had chose not to know the Lord. Mm -hmm. He liked his life of riches and women and lands and power. the power. Well, and he and liked greed. it all. And what happened? The plagues. Yes. <laughs> the plagues kept coming. The plagues came and they came and Moses kept going back to him. See, God didn't give up. He kept giving him an mm -hmm. opportunity. Mm -hmm. And how many times does he give us an opportunity? Because mm -hmm. he doesn't want us to live under the curse. Mm -hmm. Amen. He wants that's us to live good. under the blessing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's such a good example because we know what happened to Pharaoh. 
and even mm -hmm. to the point of his child, uh, you know, the mm -hmm. firstborn. He's the one that spoke that, that the firstborn would mm -hmm. begin not thinking that would involve his own. I'm telling you, sin, the curse, sin, will take you farther than you want to go, and you're going to stay longer than you want to stay, and it's going to cost you a whole lot more than yes. you want to pay. Yes. It is really better to choose God. Okay? Choose life. Choose God. But Pharaoh said no. You know about that also, Donette? Did Pharaoh's choice just affect Pharaoh? No. When those plagues came, as horrific as they yeah. were, they not only affected Pharaoh, but they affected his entire kingdom. Kingdom. Even to the place mm -hmm. where it cost everyone in the kingdom their firstborn. That's right. So God didn't do that because when you were reading that, all of that brought me back to John 10.10. 10. The thief comes mm -hmm. only, only, only reason he comes. Please understand this, people who are watching this program. Yeah. The only reason that Satan comes is to steal, kill, and destroy. destroy. God, however, oh, yeah. says, I came to give you life mm -hmm. and more abundantly. So choice, it is in our hands. God made the way, just as you explained, mm -hmm. God made the way. And Pharaoh's response to that, who is this guy that yeah. I should listen and obey him? But because he made that choice, mm -hmm. he chose the curse, which is what Satan has. Mm -hmm. Life is the blessing, which is what God gives mm -hmm. to those, and the scripture says, mm -hmm. who obey me. Right. And, you know, back to what you said that people say, well, why did this happen? If God loved me, mm -hmm. God does love them. Yes. He loved them so much, yeah. John three sixteen, that he gave his only begotten right. son. It's Satan who That's steals, right. kills, kills, and, and destroys. destroys, not God. God came to give life. Nice. So let's be real clear mm -hmm. that God gives life, God mm -hmm. gives blessing, and disobedience brings about curse and mm -hmm. falling into a place where Satan mm -hmm. can steal, kill, and destroy us. Mm -hmm. And I always say this about that, that if I let Satan steal the word of God from me, mm -hmm. he'll put me in a place where he can kill something in my life and maybe even destroy it. Maybe it's a relationship or, you know, mm -hmm. you, you, there are a yeah. lot of different deaths, let me say right. it that way. Um, but we don't want to give him that. No. But we're going to have to choose mm -hmm. to give ourselves to God. Mm -hmm. Not to say that things won't happen in our lives because we do still live in the fallen world where sin uh, brings about curse. Mm -hmm. We live in that world. Yes. But God says, come to me. Stay, stay here with me mm -hmm. in, in protection, covenant with me. Yes. And I will give you life and more abundantly. And the good example was the Israelites during the same yes. time. Yes, yes. Pharaoh and the Egyptians, the plagues were coming upon them, you know, the firstborns were being slayed or dying, that the Israelites and Moses were protected. Lived in the land They of went Goshen. in the house and they put up the blood mm -hmm. over the door mm -hmm. and they were protected. Mm -hmm. They were protected. And in, in, in Exodus 19.5 it says, Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me mm. above all people, for all the earth is mine. And God spoke this to Moses. Mm -hmm. And um, they were protected. The same thing was going on in the world, but they weren't experiencing it. No, it said he, Goshen. There was darkness everywhere yeah. else, but there was light yes. in Goshen. Yes. Until it come to the 10th plague, mm -hmm. you know, that's when the children of Israel had to participate. And, and there's the choice element. That's right. Making the choice to be covered right. by the blood of the lamb. Yeah. Um, and this was a demonstration, not just for them, but for us today, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that it is necessary 
uh, for us to be covered by the blood of the Lamb to avoid the curse mm -hmm. or the plague that befell mm -hmm. um, the uh, Pharaoh and all of his army. And everything that he chose not to be obedient mm -hmm. to God yes. because of, he lost. He lost it all. Down to his life. He lost it. Everything. He lost it all. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we only got a little over two minutes left here. I got all these notes. You see all my notes here. Sharon, we're going to be here a while. Sharon, I love the word. Yeah, we're going to be talking about obedience for a while. But there's an old hymn, mm, yeah. Trust and Obey. Now, I want to read some of the words to this to you. Uh, I've always loved that song. And uh, Pastor Tom Waters, many of you remember him, always said, if we just live by this, Amen. If we would just trust and obey. The scriptures, I mean the scriptures, the first verse says, when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. The second verse, not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the skies, but his smile quickly drives it away. Not a fear or a doubt, not a sigh or a tear can abide while we trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but our toil he doth richly repay. Not a grief or a loss, not a frown or a cross, but is blessed if we trust and obey. But we never can prove the delights of his love until all on the altar we lay. For the favor he shows, for the joy he bestows, are for them who will trust and obey. And the fifth verse, then in fellowship sweet, we will sit at his feet or we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do, where he sends we will go. Never fear, only trust and obey. Mm. Of course, you all know the chorus, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy, to be joyful, to have that shout that in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Obedience, not always easy. It's a choice. We know as a child growing up or raising a child, when we ask them to do something, we expect them <laughs> to obey. And when they don't obey, well, we know what happens. They're dealt with that disobedience. God so loved you. He made a way for you to have a blessed and abundant life. I pray you know Jesus today as your Lord and Savior. If not, just bow your head, talk to him, ask him to come in and walk with you every day. Get in this word of God, okay, and read it Amen. every day. Amen. Find you a Bible preaching church and just fall in love with him more and more. God bless. Have joy in your heart today. Ask Jesus in, okay? One day I was walking in a world of sin, no rest for my weary soul. Then I met a man, said he'd be my friend, all my burdens he did roll. He took those worldly desires, gave me heavenly fire, now I got a brand new goal. Since I met this man called Jesus Christ, I got the joy, joy, joy. We keep looking for breakthroughs in crowds. And we keep looking for breakthroughs in, in multitudes. If I could get to the right place, if I can get to the right church, if I can get to the right preacher, if I can get to the right atmosphere, the right place where they got the right music. But some of the greatest breakthroughs in the Bible happens when there's only two individuals. Man and God. Shh. That's why I've seen people all my life.